Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Give people some time to get in. Um, if you were just with me on the Q&A, thanks for coming back. But if you're new, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Katherine Schober. I'll do a little introduction in a second. But while we are waiting for people to come on in, um, I always like to see who's here in the chat. So if you can go down to your chat, make sure it says to everyone. It automatically goes to host and panelists. So in that little two box, click on it and change it to everyone so we can all kind of talk with each other. That's more fun. And let me know who's here and where you're watching from. Pam from Acton, good to see you. From Iowa, Jill from California, Paul from Oregon. Paul, I am also in Oregon, I'm in Bend. Emmy from Milford, thank you for your congrats on the baby. Um, for those of you who don't know, I had a baby a month early in January. So I was kind of scrambling to get ready for this maternity leave. Uh, Courtney, Courtney, good to see you again from Washington. Eileen from Washington, Karen from Missouri. I'm also from Missouri, Karen from St. Louis. Uh, Kathleen from New Zealand. Kathleen, I think you might be our farthest person. That is awesome. Sandra, good to see you from Arizona. Linda, good to see you from Charlotte. Judy from Washington. Christine from Mercer, Pennsylvania. Who else did I miss? Tom, hello from Georgia. Terry, good to see you from New York. Another um, Nevada, Rosanna, good to see you. California, Lara, Lockport, New York. Andrea, thanks for coming back. And again, make sure you're writing to everyone in that two box. I'm getting some to just host and panelists, and we want we want to all be able to talk with each other. So um, in that little two box at the bottom of, of your chat, make sure it says um, to everyone. Debbie's also here in Oregon. Karen, I know Washington, Missouri very well. Barbara's from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Judy is a fellow St. Louisan. Where are you from in St. Louis, Judy? I grew up in uh, Richmond Heights. Matthew from Wisconsin. We have people from all over, a lot of California. It's Sandy, good to see you. Sandy is a previous course student. Uh, Daniela from Peru, very cool. Uh, Elder Perry from Idaho, Virginia, Utah, Iowa. We have people from all over. Great. Okay. And while I'll get started in a second, um, do we have anyone here who has already taken one of the courses, either the handwriting course or the German for genealogist course? Like, I just kind of want to know who I'm talking to. If you've taken one of the courses already in the chat, let me know. I know Sandy, Sandy has not yet. Nikki, Frank, oh, Franklin, good to see you. Handwriting, no course yet. Debbie's a handwriting student. Carol's taken one. All right, perfect. Yes, thank you. Currently signed up but not completed. Great. Okay, handwriting. Sandra, yes, I recognize your name. And yes, good to see you back here. Perfect. Jane, good to see you back here. Great. Okay, so we have a lot of people who have taken some who have either signed up but not started, um, or maybe um, some people who are brand new, which is awesome. So I know I advertise this as um, showcasing the German for genealogist course, but I had a couple people reach out and ask me to show the handwriting course as well. So I hope you don't mind. Um, we'll do a brief introduction to the old German handwriting course, and then we'll get to that German for genealogist course, and you can decide which course um, would work best for you in your specific genealogy research. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm so happy you all are here. So I know a lot of you, I love seeing all these familiar names, but I think we have some new people as well. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Katherine Schober, and I am a German to English genealogy translator. So this is a career I kind of invented. Uh, whenever I tell anyone who's not in the genealogy world what I do, they're always like, hmm, okay, but I love it. Um, what I do is I work with the old German handwriting in documents such as letters and diaries and church records and vital records, pretty much anything and everything, helping people to read the words of their ancestors. And since I love history and I love language, I just feel so lucky that I get to do this every day. I do have my master's degree in German. So I started studying German in high school, went on to do my master's, and that was a two-year program, the first of which was in Salzburg, Austria. Has anyone been there? You can let me know in the chat if you've been there. It's absolutely beautiful. 
And the second was in Bowling Green, Ohio. Also a great town, but not the same as Salzburg, Austria. Um, but when I was in Ohio, that's actually where I met my Austrian husband. He was doing a study abroad there. And we, uh, we had a lot of people who've been to Salzburg. That's great. Um, and my husband and I met there and we still speak German today. So I do get to keep in practice with my German, which is very helpful for me. And um, it's fun for me to get to speak German every day in my home. However, that being said, that old German handwriting was not something I had ever heard of before until something happened that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. And that's same for any genealogical German words. I had never heard of these words from hundreds of years ago because they don't teach us that when you study German in school. So I remember what it was like to look at a document and have absolutely no idea how I would ever read it or to look at an old fashioned word, try to find its meaning on the internet and really having no idea how I could find it. And that's with me having studied German. So I remember those feelings of overwhelm. To be honest, it wasn't that long ago for me. So I know how you feel. I've been where you are. And I promise you there are tricks to make it easier. So some of you, uh, I'm sure most of you who are on here are familiar at least with what the old German handwriting is. But just in case, if not, this is what it looks like. And you might see it and think, why Germans, why? As if it's not bad enough that these documents are in a different language, they have to be in this crazy handwriting as well. And this is the type of handwriting that was used in the German speaking regions up until World War II. It's a different alphabet. So if you're working with any documents in the decades or centuries before World War II, you are going to come in contact with this crazy handwriting that has been known to cause many a headache. And like I said, I had never heard of it either. Um, when I was just studying German, I had a friend reach out to me and they knew I spoke German. And they said, I have this historical document. Would you be able to translate it for me? And since I love history, I willingly said yes. I was very excited to get to work with it. But then I looked at it and was like, what in the world is this? Why can't I read this writing? And I didn't know that it was a different alphabet at the time. And you can see here, I uh, took a screenshot of a Facebook post that I wrote back then to see if any of my friends in Austria could actually read this writing and help me to translate the document for a friend. And luckily, one of my old professors reached out and he was able to help me out. But I just remember being so amazed that he could actually read that scribble that made no sense to me. And then finally, once I started in the genealogy world, I really had to use a lot of books, a lot of internet resources. I was scrambling to find anything that could teach me. Um, I actually reached out to my Austrian husband's grandmother um, because she had learned the script back when she was in school in the 40s. And I was just desperate trying to find any help that I could. And even once I got into it, I still had so many questions like, how do you tell an N and an E apart? If any of you have run into the script, they look almost exactly the same. Or why is an S written one way at the top of the document, but completely different at the bottom? That's because there's actually three different versions of the letter S. Or what in the world does that abbreviation mean? And how can I find out? Because it's not a modern abbreviation, so there's nothing online telling me what that abbreviation means. And last but not least, how will I ever be able to translate entire documents all by myself? Because I really wanted to. I love the history and I love the language, but I just couldn't imagine being able to do it. But luckily, after years of practice, after hours and hours and hours of searching the internet, I was able to slowly but surely figure things out and start my translation career as a genealogy translator. However, I don't want you all to have to go through those years of frustration and trying to find resources that I did. 
So that's why I created my courses. I really love to teach and I wanted to put something in one place for everyone so that you all who are wanting to translate your German documents can do so without having to go through all those headaches and tears <laughs> that I did. So uh, as you know, this is where you can see the sneak peek into the course. Um, for those of you who joined a little late, I did get requests to show the handwriting course as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the handwriting course first, and then we'll jump over to the brand new course, the German for Genealogists after that. So stick around if you're interested more in the second one. But first, let's go to the handwriting course. So I think a lot of you know me on here, but for those of you who are new, uh, something you may not know about me is that I taught English over in Austria for about three years. Uh, after I finished my master's, I moved back to Austria and taught English to teenagers in an Austrian high school. And one of my classes was a group of 17 year old boys who had much better things to do, according to them, than learn English. But I really noticed that if I made the lessons fun, they slowly started to get excited to come to class and to actually remember what we learned. And my favorite game that I always like to talk about is we played speed dating. I had them pretend to be characters from American TV shows, and they had to practice their English in the voice of that character. Um, funnily enough, a lot of them liked How I Met Your Mother the best and always pretended to be Barney from How I Met Your Mother. But um, while I couldn't make speed dating a part of this course, I did want to actually bring the energy and the vibe of making lessons fun into it. So I put in different flashcards, matching games, and interactive tests and quizzes so that when you're doing the course, you too get actually excited to come back and keep learning. So maybe we'll do speed dating someday. Well, who knows what the internet will bring. But this is what the course looks like. Um, this is the handwriting course. It is divided into three sections. In the first section, we talk all about the old German handwritten alphabet. So I walk you through each individual letter of the course. Oops. Let's go to, try and, there we go. Um, so you can see this is the S. I talk about the three different versions. And each uh, slide of this course will give you different tips and tricks so that you can start to recognize these letters by yourself. And you can go back and watch these videos as often as you like. You will have lifetime access to this course. So anytime you want to review, just pop back over and watch the video over and over again. Once you're feeling confident, that's when it's time for the games. So here we have flashcards. Um, anyone in the chat know what that letter is? This one kind of looks like our English letter. D, oh, I call, it's close to Z. Karen got it, it's a Y, so this is a Y. Z does look very similar, so I can see um, why those of you who said Z thought that, but this one is a Y. So you can check your work by clicking on it and it will flip over. So really you can just keep testing yourself as often as you like, and then you'll be ready to work with your um, German documents slowly but surely. So there's different activities for each lesson. And then once you get to the end of the alphabet section, there's a nice little review where you get actual words from documents that I've translated and you're welcome to print this out and write on it if you like, and you get to really test yourself to see what you've learned. Then it's time for section two, the vocabulary. So I always like to tell people, there's no need to learn the entire modern German language uh, to work with genealogical documents. If you learn the genealogy German, you will be pretty much good to go. So in section B, we talk about the most important vocabulary that you're going to need to work with your documents. So you have names, months of the year, abbreviations, those hard abbreviations, milestone words, so any words related to birth, marriage, and death, um, occupations, and then diseases, so those causes of death that you'll see. 
C. Um, these lessons work much the same way as the letters. You first get a PowerPoint video of me teaching you the different occupations. Oops. There we go. Um, and then I walk you through the letters. So you'll learn to recognize these occupations and read the individual letters of the occupation as well. So after you're done watching the video, you can then go on to the flashcards, the matching games and the quizzes and test yourself. So the matching game is something that a lot of people really like. Uh, you get, I'm going to close my chat. There we go. Um, it's timed, so you can go as fast as you like. You get to look at the handwritten word and then match it with its typed equivalent. And this is so helpful for the handwriting because you're starting to learn to sight read an entire word at once rather than saying, okay, this is a J, this is an A, this is an N. You're getting your brain trained to do some sight reading. So you match them as best you can and then see if you can beat your time from last time if you want to. And it actually has a leaderboard here. And for some reason I'm only in third place, but you can really compare yourself with other students in the course or just try to beat your own time or do it slowly if you like. It's completely up to you. This is your course. And then once you're finished with all the vocabulary sections, it's time for the main reason you came, reading actual records. So you get an entire lesson on all my tips and tricks, and then you get to work with vital records, church records, and letters. And in each section, you get actual genealogical documents so that you can test yourself. Uh, for me, this was the hardest part. I would try to translate records, but I would have nobody to tell me if I was actually right or wrong. Um, and so this is why this section, I think, is so helpful, because you can try to transcribe the record and then see um, if you were actually correct. So you get the different record, and then once you are done, you can scroll down, and you get the German transcription and, a little bonus, the English translation as well. So there's multiple records, there's church records, there's vital records, you get real letters. So you really feel confident with uh, that handwriting. So that is the handwriting course. So if you are more focused on wanting to learn the letters of the alphabet, this would be the course for you. I think I had a question in the chat. Let's see, I missed it. Um, Nikki asked, is it self-paced or time limit in accessing the course? It is entirely self-paced. So you have this course for your entire life. I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but it's no time limit whatsoever. All right, so that is the handwriting course if you want to focus on the script. Um, also with that course, you will of course learn a little bit of German along the way. However, if the German language is your uh, little foe that's the most overwhelming to you, then this course is uh, the better course for you, the German for genealogist. So this is the brand new course. It just came out in November. And this course focuses on all the German language that you're going to need to know to work with your documents. It is a ton of information, and I'm so proud of it. Because it's so much information, I divided it up into four sections and I tried to make it fun. So I titled each section like the four years of an American high school. So if you're from a different country, this is how you can experience that American high school system, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. In your freshman year, you will learn the basic vocabulary, so you get the family words. And just like the handwriting course, um, each lesson will start off with a PowerPoint video lesson of me walking you through the material, teaching it to you. And you can, again, watch this as often as you like. So this course does not focus on the handwriting. That's what the first course is for. But because the handwriting is so important, I've included 
countless examples of how these words will look in the script. So you will at least become familiar with uh, those words. And then after you watch the video, you can of course still do the flashcards. This course also has a lot of activities. Anybody know what this word means in the chat? Yep, who got it first? Matt got it first and a lot of you got it as well. Very, very good, that word is sun. So you can flip it over and go through. And like I said, you get that handwritten example as well. Going through, you get different sections. You learn about the articles, you learn about the occupations. And again, sometimes we talk about different records and where you can expect to find the occupations in those records. And it's something I really like about this course is the vocabulary list. I created many, many vocabulary lists for you to download and print out if you like. And they include the German word, the English translation, and how that word will look in the old German handwriting. So I think this is a really, really helpful part of the course. So that's freshman year. Um, like I said, it also has the matching games for the days of the week. And it works much the same as the handwriting course. You then go to match them and then try to beat your time as well. Once you are done with freshman year, you get a review to end each year. So you can really test yourself and make sure you've uh, retained all that material you learned. And then in sophomore year, we move on to the numbers and months. You get telling time because time is important on German records. You get grammar. So this is really important. Um, I'm gonna move away from the matching so it's not distracting. Grammar in German is so important because based on the type of grammar used in your sentence, it's going to mean something totally different for your ancestor. So I have surprised so many clients by saying, oh, because this word is this in German, this is actually what that sentence means. It wasn't what you think. So you're learning all of these nuances of German grammar. So you're really getting the intricacies and details of your ancestor's life. So I'm so excited to be able to teach people this. And then you get, of course, more, even more milestone words and abbreviations. You get possessive case, past tense, which of course in genealogy, it's all about past tense in German. So you learn how that works. Um, something that's different about this course is it includes a lot of worksheets and each of the worksheets all relate to genealogy. So any worksheet you do, it's going to be in a genealogical context. So this worksheet, for example, you're learning the past tense, but it's all through the story of a man named Heinz, who is actually my ancestor, who was a soldier in World War I. So every activity and worksheet you do, it's going to relate to sentences and things you will find in your own genealogical documents. You get more grammar, you learn all about the spelling variations um, and then reviews. And then finally in your senior year, we go super in depth into records. You learn how to work with baptismal records. Each one includes again, vocabulary list with the German, the English and the handwritten. You get to work with church records, um, vital records, and these are different activities from the handwriting course as well. Of course, we talk about similar topics because we want to prepare you for German genealogy, but the activities are all different. Um, so you get little quizzes as well that you get to practice working with records. So you get a transcribed record and then you try to read it and answer the questions about it. And one of my favorite things about this is the comprehensive vocabulary list, which I'll show you in a second. First, I wanna show you the final exam, which I think is really fun. It's all about this lady, Rosina Pumhusel, and you get to put everything that you practiced, uh, that you learned into practice, answering the questions all relating to Rosina. So this will really prepare you to work with records um, from your own ancestor because you're doing it for Rosina as well. And then, like I mentioned, you get this crazy master vocabulary list, 25 pages long with German, English, and handwritten for you to have on hand when you work with your own genealogical records. So 
I don't want you to just take my word for it, but we do have um, almost a thousand and we're getting so close to a thousand students so far for the two courses. And luckily, many of them have given us such wonderful, wonderful feedback. Kurt was one of our very first students and he said taking the course was one of the best genealogical decisions he's ever made, which made my day, of course. That's what every teacher wants to hear. Sandy, who's on here, so thank you, Sandy, for this nice testimonial, said the course was loads of fun and a great learning experience. And Sandy also said that she loved being able to take the course on her own time. So that's what something is that a lot of people love. Um, we're not doing genealogy 365 days a year. Um, so if you take a break and you start to kind of forget the handwriting or forget that German language, you can always come back to it months later and review those lessons, review those videos, review those matching games, um, however you want. So you can take advantage of the Roots Tech discount today if you like, and then start the course in six months if you're busy right now. So that's something that I really like about it and that seems to be a favorite of our students so far is that totally up to you. And uh, Anne, you're on uh, here too, I think. She says she likes that she's been able to see words out of the scribble and I remember that feeling well. And Valerie is one of our new German for genealogist students and she said it was fun and interactive. She also likes the self-paced and the course is crammed full of valuable skills for genealogists. So I'm so happy that we have happy students so far. At the end, you get a nice little certificate that you can hang up on your fridge. So that's been fun to see people uh, send me pictures of their certificates. And one of the things I like the most about the course is that um, you have course buddies, if you like. Whoever is interested can send me an email and then I pair you up with another course student and you are welcome to work together with that student and kind of check in to see um, how you're both progressing and share your genealogy journey. So normally, let's get to the, the meat of the matter, German for genealogists costs $477 and the handwriting course costs $319. But for the extra special Roots Tech discount, it's 15% off. So that ends up being over $70 off for the German course and almost $50 off for the handwriting course. There is a monthly payment option and that ends up being only $68 a month for both courses. Um, German for genealogists is six months and the handwriting is four months. So you're welcome to do the monthly if that works better for you. I like that little baby. And then finally, uh, we do have a bundle deal. A lot of people have decided they want to take both courses and really learn that handwriting and then learn the language as well. The bundle deal is automatically discounted. Uh, normally it would cost about $800 if you bought each course separately, but if you get them both at once, you save almost $150. So that's something a lot of people have decided to do as well. And then today, I always like to offer a special bonus for anyone who gets it within the uh, time I'm talking. So if you get the course, either one today by midnight Eastern, you will get a special bonus of the premium vocabulary article package. So that is an extra $25 for free. And that includes articles that are normally only available to my premium members all of these different articles so it's tons of pages of all of this information and that's yours totally free if you get either course or the bundle deal by midnight tonight so i'll see who gets it and then i'll send you a link to get this package completely free for getting the bonus so this is the link to the course let me see if i nope Give me one second. I'll put the link in the chat. Got to copy and paste it for you. All right, so this is the link to the course. Let me go back and share my screen again. There we go. Um, and then if you put in code Roots Tech 22 for either individual course, 
that will give you the 15% off. However, a lot of people have a hard time finding the coupon code. So I wanted to show you real quick how to find it. So go to the link I just pasted in the chat. And then that will lead you here. What you then do is click on the course you like. The bundle deal is here and you do not need a code that is automatically about $150 cheaper. But if you want just one, click on the course. And then do not click on this button because that will not show you the monthly plan. So scroll down, pick which payment option you like, press sign me up. And then you enter the coupon code right here. So press Roots Tech 22, press apply, and that will give you it. If for some reason it's you're having a hard time getting the coupon code, no worries. I'll get your refund of that discount um, within the next couple of days. But that's how you enter the coupon code. So let's go. Any questions in the chat about anything I can help you with related to either course or the bundle deal? Um, is YB says, is the handwriting course teaching current shift? Yes, it is teaching current shift. Very good question. That is the name of the old German handwriting. How much did the script change over time? Um, it changed kind of slowly. So the 1600s is definitely more decorative and loopy. The uh, 17 and 1800s is more what this course focuses on. That's the kind of standard current shift. And as you get into the 1900s, that's the Suterlin, which is a little bit boxy. This course focuses mostly on the current shrift, which is most common in the uh, documents you'll find in the 17 and 1800s and some into the 20th century as well. Joy said, don't forget to mention the study buddies. Yes, thank you, Joy. Study buddies have been so fun. It's been really cool to get to pair people up to work together on the course, if that's something you're interested in. Nina says the premium group is great too. Yes, if you're interested in that, go to my website, germanologyunlock.com, premium button. And that's a, um, a little extra handwriting help where we meet once a week and it's, uh, I help you with your handwriting questions. Sandy says it's very helpful to go back for review, but also to check up on a wor worrisome word I might have trouble with. Glad to hear it, Sandy. Um, let's see if it's a link there again. Um, oh, Andrea said, don't forget to mention the Facebook group. Thank you, Andrea. We have a new Facebook group um, for all students of either, either course. And it's really become a great place for the genealogy course students to collaborate. So if you sign up for the course, you get an invitation to the Facebook group. And right now, um, there's just so much going on in there. It's really fun to see people asking each other questions, helping each other out with their research. Um, so I've been really happy with that. Thank you, Andrea. Courtney said, is there a monthly payment for the bundle deal? Yes, there is. So if you go to the bundle option, which is doo -doo -doo, here, scroll down, and it's this monthly option here. And you do have 30 days to try it out. We've had so many happy students, but if you're a little nervous, uh, you want to make sure it works for you. You have 30 days to try it out and see if it works for you in your genealogy journey. But we've had very happy students so far. So, um, but that at least gives you a little peace of mind. Um, YB says not adding, seeing a bundle option when adding each course to the uh, cart. Yes, so I will post the link for the bundle right here in the chat. That's the bundle. So if you wanna directly get the bundle, I just posted the link in the chat. Um, Paul says, what about obsolete words or the practice of measuring dates relative to holidays? Great question. We talk a lot about obsolete words in, I think, both courses. I do mention some. Um, if you have my book, The Magic of German Church Records, which is available at my booth, Germanology Unlocked, um, I have an entire chapter all about relating dates to holidays. So that is a good place to look for that. I think I'm missing some questions. Um, Cor Corinna says, can we do the course at any time? Yes, you can take advantage of the Roots Tech deal today, start it whenever you like and finish it whenever you like. Once you get it, you have the course for life. 
Um, how, and she asked, how do we log into the course? Um, once you sign up, you will be sent login instructions. And then she also asked, how do we need to do it all in one sitting? No, that's the beauty of the self-paced. You can do a little bit now and then a little bit in six months, or you can finish it all in one sitting if that's what you prefer. It's completely up to you how fast or how slow you go through the course. Brenda asked, is the style of script the same for all German states? That's a great question, Brenda. And yes, more or less. Um, it's going to differ based on your scribe, just like my handwriting would differ from your handwriting slightly. But overall, uh, the script changed more um, based on time and century rather than a region. Very good question. Courtney asked if the books come with the courses. No, the books are separate, um, but you can get them. Germanology unlocked on my website there. Um, and uh, I just put that in the chat. And if you get it in soon, I'm shipping some books from here and some books um, from St. Louis. And if, if I have enough here, I'm happy to sign it for you and write you a little note of encouragement for your uh, genealogy journey. Um, Kathy said, did you say we have six months to take the course if we buy it today? No, um, thanks for asking that. You can uh, finish the course whenever you like. You have this course for your entire life. There's no time limit. Um, I think what you're referring to is I said, you can start it today. And if you take a break from genealogy, you can start it again in six months. Um, so you're welcome to do it whenever works best for you. Margie says, is the discount still good tomorrow? Yes, the discount is good until Saturday, but anyone who gets the course by midnight tonight gets that extra premium vocabulary package, which includes many, many articles that are normally only available for my premium members, but you'll get that as an extra bonus for getting the discounted course today. Um, do, do, do. Uh, M. Sween says, how many times can you repeat the course? As many times as you want. If you want to do it 100 times, that's completely up to you. Uh, Sandy, who's on here, I think has told me that she's done different things a couple times, um, if I remember correctly, Sandy. Um, so yeah, you can go back and do it whenever you like. So whenever you're starting up your genealogy again, you're welcome to come back into the course and start over at the beginning or pop back into the middle or just do certain flashcards. It's, it's totally yours for the rest of your life. I'm gonna get the courses, get that, there we go. So here is the link again for anyone who wants it. Uh, the bundle deal is on the very right and the individual courses are next to that. Uh, Khan says, is low German writing different from high German? Very good question, uh, no. High German is the standard German, and then low German is a specific dialect, but they all wrote in the same type of handwriting. So very, very good question. Deanne says, are the courses downloadable? The actual course themselves is not, but um, different worksheets and vocabulary lists are. So for example, Well, let's go to the German. So like this vocabulary list, for example, is completely downloadable. Any worksheet, for example, you can download it. So anything that's um, a quiz or a worksheet, a worksheet or something like that is downloadable. The flashcards and matching games, of course, are interactive. So that's just going to be on your computer. But any vocabulary list, any worksheet, uh, we have a cool family tree up at the very top. This I like a lot. So for your family, after you've learned all the different vocabulary words for family, you get to look at a little family tree and then answer questions about that. So you can print this out as well. Um, so different, different sections are downloadable, but the entire course does need to be done on your computer. Uh, yeah, Sandy says she goes back whenever she needs a quick review. Um, let's see. Margie says, what is the premium membership? Thank you, Margie. It's a good question. Uh, Nina and Sandy actually are two of our premium members. They're on here. And the premium membership uh, has three different levels. 
the gold level is something that includes ask the translator hour. So that's like office hours with me. So I do ask that you can read the handwriting to a pretty good level, but that maybe you're at the point where you just get stuck on words from time to time. So you can transcribe records a lot by yourself, but maybe that word that's a town is just too hard to read, or you can't figure out this person's name or that occupation is driving you crazy. And in that case, you then come into our private Facebook group for the premium membership. You can post your record in the group we meet on Wednesdays at one o'clock Eastern. And then you say, okay, this word is giving me trouble. Can you tell me what it is? And then I answer that question for you then and there, tell you what the word is. So then you can continue your research and not get stuck on that one annoying word. So we meet once a week. Um, if you are busy on Wednesdays at one o'clock, you're welcome to put your document in the group whenever, and then I'll answer it on that specific Wednesday. And then you can come back and find out what the answer is whenever you're free. So we have a nice little community. It's really fun. Um, and then the silver and bronze memberships are different levels as well. But the gold one is where you get my personal help for the handwritten documents. Um, Helen says, can the course be copied to a new computer? Yeah, it's a, it's a web web based course. So you just log in from whichever computer that you are on. Uh, Nina, Nina, you're just writing to me, you're just writing to host and panelists, but you said something very nice. So I'm going to read it out loud. Uh, she said she didn't take the German for genealogist class because she's a German translator, but the handwriting class is invaluable. No one teaches that style of writing anymore. The class is also great for helping you understand many of the anti antiquated words and spelling. So thank you, Nina, for that great testimonial. I'm so happy to have you as a student. M. Sween says, will this help with Austrian records also? Very good question. Yes, I translate a lot of Austrian records um, and this class works just as much for them as for German because the language and the handwriting used was the same in Austria as in Germany. Um, of course, you might get certain Austrian dialect words if you're working with a letter or a diary from Austria, but if you're working with a um, official record, then the German language and handwrit handwriting will be the same. Um, Paul, I see that you wrote me about the course and you can't find your link to it because after you purchased it, uh, please send me an email and we'll make sure to get you that login information. Jane says, um, I know you already said this, but I missed it. How do we find your Facebook page? It is just Germanology Unlocked on Facebook. Or if you go to my booth here at Roots Tech and scroll down to the very bottom of the booth, it will take you directly to the Facebook page if you click on that icon. All right, and don't forget, if you do want to get the course today, you get uh, all those premium articles, which is normally $25. Um, you get that as an extra bonus. So that's so much more information that you can get today. So if you're considering getting the course um, in the next couple of days, get it today, check it out. You do have that 30 day guarantee, but like I said, we've had very happy students so far. And that way you can get all of those extra articles completely free. Um, YB says, can you please preview your Roots Tech surname class? I believe there is a pre-recorded session and then the Q&A tomorrow. Yes, there is a, um, it's called Schmidt, Schmidt or Schmidt. And then it talks about uh, German surnames. So if you go to the sessions on Roots Tech and um, type in that or my name in the search bar, you'll find that session. And I am doing a, a Q&A at one o'clock Eastern tomorrow. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. Lots of webinars. Get you the link for that Q&A. So if anyone wants to uh, watch the name session and then come to the Q&A about German names tomorrow, be sure to register that one you do need to register for and you can register at the link I just put in the chat. Andrea said, just purchase, which, which course did you get Andrea? 
Oh, Jane says, uh, thank you so much. You helped me to find a German ancestor's hometown, Gopingen. Great job. Great, Jane. I'm so excited that I was able to help you. Thank you. Um, Matt says, I'm confused about the pricing. He's interested in the bundle. So the bundle is um, the two courses together. If you bought them both separately, I think it totals up to $796. But if you get the course, the bundle deal together, it's only $649. So it saves you $147. Um, if you go to the link I just posted, and then the third course there is the bundle deal. And then you can either do the monthly pricing, which ends up being $109 per month, or you can do the one-time pricing, which is $649. So completely up to you. Andrea says, will tomorrow's live webinar be recorded? I have a meeting at the same time. I bought the writing course last year. I just purchased the German genealogy course today. Great, Andrea, I'm so happy to have you in both courses. That's awesome. And um, I can record the question and answer session. Um, if people are interested, I'm happy to do that. So let me know if, uh, just send me an email if you think that would be helpful. I'm happy to send that out. All right, just checking my email. We're getting lots and lots of new course students. I'm really excited. I, I love Roots Tech because everyone is just so enthusiastic about genealogy. I really miss being there in person uh, in the expo hall because the energy is just crazy. There's, there's nothing else like it, but I'm really glad we can at least do this virtually. And I'm really excited to see all these new students coming in. Be sure to join our Facebook group. Uh, my assistant, Amy, will send you a welcome email to uh, the course. And in that email will be the Facebook group. So be sure to come on over and join it and talk with all of our other students so far. And if you want a course buddy um, to kind of be a new genealogy friend, then let me know that as well by replying to the email. Our course buddy uh, program has been really fun. It's been cool to pair people up and get to see them work together on their genealogy. Okay, I will record the Q&A. Um, Matt says, does this, this include the free stuff if I do this by midnight. Yes, so if you get the course tonight by midnight Eastern, you will get an email in the next couple of days. Give us a couple of days just because it's a lot of emails with Roots Tech um, with a coupon code for that free premium article package where you get, let's see, oops, um, a package deal of all of those articles. So it's like it's like a book basically of all this genealogy information. So if you want to get the course today, you will also get all of this information completely for free sent to your email. Carolyn says, does this class work for Polish rec Poland records that were under German rule? Yes, so any records that were in German, this course works for. Wish I could do other languages as well, but uh, no, it's just for German. But if they were records that were written in German at the time, this course will work for that. Let's see, did I miss any other questions? Um, April says, I have photocopies of records from the mid 1600s before they were more organized. Will these courses help with deciphering those? April, to be honest, they, it will help. It will give you a great head start, but the 1600s are difficult. Like I said, the 1600s, the writing is a lot more decorative um, and very flourishy. I do this, I translate this stuff every day and I, I have to kind of concentrate more for the 1600s because it is a challenge. So it will give you a wonderful head start, but you will have to practice with those specific 1600s records because those um, are even more challenging than records from the 1700s and 1800s. Let's see, did I miss any other questions? Paul says the links don't seem to show uh, the discounts. Am I missing something? Yes, you have to you go to this here, go to that section or that link, Ooh, brain's tired. And then it will take you here. The bundle does not need a discount code. The bundle is already discounted as it is $147 off. So if you're getting the bundle, you just get the bundle. You don't need to worry about your coupon code. It's already included in the price. For these two courses, if you want it, you click on it, scroll down to which payment option you like, press sign me up, 
And then right here, it will say add coupon code. Type in Roots Tech 22, press apply, and it will take off the price, um, the discounted price. For some reason, every time we do have people who, who don't see this, I don't know if some people's computers happen to take it off or not, but if you do not see it, do not worry. I will see any courses that come through without this discount. And within the next couple of days, I will get you your discounted refund. I'm very good about that. Um, I don't like to, even if people don't notice it themselves that they didn't do the discount, um, I will automatically discount it for you because I don't want to be unfair to anyone. Um, so we will get that back to you if for some reason you don't see the coupon code there. So no worries. Um, let's see, who else did I miss? Elder Parrot has says, how much has German genealogy helped Fruits Tech? I'm not sure exactly uh, what you mean by that. Um, I personally have been at Roots Tech um, since 2017, and I love it. It's been it's been so much fun. I've gotten to speak a lot, have a booth there, and just getting to meet a lot of you who are on here. So it's it's been really fun to meet everybody. Um, Nikki says, "Why did people have so many names?" That's a good question, and the names seem interchangeable from document to document. That's a great question, Nikki. Um, there were. I'm not sure if you mean different variants of the names or different like first name, middle name, et cetera. If you, need, if you mean the first name and the middle name, that was just kind of the naming practice, you know, might've been named Johann Michael Georg Schmidt. Um, and that is a topic for another day, but basically uh, they could have been called Johann Georg and then gone by their middle name, Georg. And so on some documents, they may have written Georg, and on some documents, they may have written Johann Georg. So it just kind of depended um, on what they preferred. But it does make our research a lot more complicated. You're right. Here's the link if anyone wants to get it. Um, Nina says, I do a lot of Jewish records from the Austrian Empire. Anything you learn in the course is valuable. Thanks, Nina. Even if you do Jewish records, you still need to know how to read civil and church records. Very, very true. Yeah, Nikki says many middle names. I know it's very confusing. Uh, Barbara says, I have a family prayer, prayer book written in Sudolin. Can't wait to take the course so I can transcribe it more easily. That's awesome, Barbara. I really hope um, it helps you. It's, it's fun to have documents so you have a goal that you can translate when you're done. That makes it a lot more fun. Uh, let's see. Jane says, our ancestor used Casper and Gasper as the first name. That is actually um, something I'm going to talk about in the name webinar. So K, which is the same as the C sound, and G got confused a lot because to German speakers, those sounds sound almost the same. So you might see C and K confused with G a lot. That's a very good point, Jane. Um, Paul says, suggest how to handle saint names when entering infos at websites. So if you're talking about um, Johann Georg, for example, I would search for all the different variations of the name. So in your first search, maybe you'll look for Johann Georg Schmidt. In your second search, maybe you'll look for Georg Schmidt. In your third search, maybe Johann Schmidt, um, because your ancestor may have used different variations of his name based on the day. So you'll want to look up um, all of those variations to find as many records available. Uh, Grant says, which of the two courses will be best completed first? I have reasonable German language skills. That's a great question, Grant. And I honestly wasn't sure myself until um, recently. Somebody asked this in our Facebook group. They had gotten the bundle deal and they asked which course they should complete first. And a lot of people said the handwriting course because then you learn to read that handwriting and once you do, then you're ready to go to the German. Um, however, really either one, the German language course does include, like I said, many, many examples of the handwriting. So you will learn German in the handwriting course and you will learn some of the handwriting in the German course. But if you have both, um, maybe try the handwriting course first. Um, Paul says, how should I enter when adding to a website? Oh, like how should you record the name itself? Um, I would include the whole name personally. So if it's Johann Georg, I would include that. Hopefully that answered your question. 
All right, any other questions? Checking my email again. I'm so excited to welcome all of you new course students. Don't forget if you do get it today, either course, you do get this whole bundle deal or not bundle deal, this whole vocabulary package completely for free. And that's tons of information that will hopefully help you with your genealogy. So like I said, if you are even considering getting the course in the next few days, um, go ahead and get it tonight if you think it will work for your genealogy, because then you get access to all of this information as well. Any other questions? Oh, I missed one, I'm sorry. Grant got the bundled course offerings. Great, Grant. I'm very happy to, uh, to welcome you to the course. And if you have Facebook, definitely be sure to join the Facebook group because it's really a cool community. And I, I check it every couple of days and it makes me so happy to see people helping each other and sharing questions and sharing experiences. It's really fun. Um, okay, so any last questions? While we're waiting, um, don't forget to come to our name Q&A tomorrow. We're gonna to be talking about uh, German surnames. Trying to find where I put the link to the Q&A. Here it is. So that course is Schmidt, Schmidt or Schmidt. And then we're gonna do a live Q&A. Oops, I just didn't copy it. Here we go. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, let me copy it without clicking on it. Here is, oh my, okay. I can't scroll back up in the chat. If for some reason it's not letting me copy it. If you scroll back up in the chat, you will find our Zoom link to um, the uh, webinar tomorrow, the Q&A. And if you're on my newsletter list, um, you will get a reminder about it. Um, if you're not on my newsletter list, go head over to my booth and you can sign up. We'd love to have you join us. Um, Paul says, um, what time is the name course? So you can watch the session whenever you like, it's pre-recorded, but I'll be doing the question and answer period at, uh, question and answer session at 10 o'clock Pacific, one o'clock Eastern. Hi, Donald. Great to have you on here. Thank you, Nikki, for posting the link. I tried three times and was having a lot of issues. Matt just got the courses. Welcome, Matt. I'm really excited to have you join us as well. All right, any last questions, last call? Okay, April got a last question. Um, does the handwriting course cover symbols? No, we do not talk about symbols in the handwriting course, but the Magic of German Church Records, again, my book, which is available here, monologyunlocked.com slash shop, um, has an entire chapter on symbols. So that Church, Rec church Records book um, has that entire chapter on feast days and converting them to dates and an entire chapter on symbols. So if that's something you're interested in, I think it would be a big help for you, April. And Sandy says it's a great book. Thank you. All right. Um, Laura says, is the Facebook group only for students of your classes? Yes. So the Facebook group um, is just for the course students. I do have a Facebook page that if, um, is for everybody. That's something you can follow. But the group is just for course students. Um, Margie says, is there anything for the non-Facebook people? You're making me feel bad. My mom always taught me never to leave anybody out. I know I feel like I'm leaving people out, but um, I did want to provide a community for anyone who's in the course because they do talk about the course and question, uh, sport course specific questions in there. So that's kind of a uh, plus of being in the course is that Facebook group. But for non, um, oh, for people who aren't on Facebook, I see, I misunderstood your question. So Margie, if you are in the course and you're not on Facebook, there is a discussion forum. Let me go to the course itself. <clears throat> Each course has a discussion forum where you can talk to the students. To be honest, um, a lot of people do post here, but the interaction is a lot more um, prevalent on Facebook. 
So we do have a lot of posts in the discussion forum on the course and everyone is welcome to read through it and talk with each other. But people seem to be better about actually interacting on the Facebook group. But there is that discussion forum for non-Facebook people in both courses. So there is an alternative as well. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, Lara says, what is your Facebook group that anyone can see? So it's my Facebook page, which is Germanology Unlocked. Um, if you go to my booth um, on the Roots Tech website, head on over to my booth and then scroll down to the bottom. And that is where the uh, link is to my Facebook page. So you'll find that there. And if you're on Instagram, go ahead and follow me on Instagram as well. I just started an Instagram account, um, I think about a year ago now. But um, I'd love to grow my Instagram Germanology community as well. So go ahead and check out those social media options and connect with me on whichever platform works best for you. All right, real last call. Any last questions? All right, well, major, major warm welcome to all of you, uh, all of you new students joining the course. And uh, be sure if you haven't yet connect with me on my newsletter, you can go to my booth and sign up for the newsletter. We have a great newsletter community and I will be in touch with all of you new, new course students. And thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to spend with me today and have a great rest of the conference.